What up guys and welcome back to Thomas Reacts here on the 360 experience with myself Thomas Maba. So today guys we are still talking about Zimbabwe. You know that a lot of people in the Southern region are not happy about Zimbabwe. A lot of South Africans are not happy about Zimbabwe because everything that happens in Zimbabwe directly affects South Africans. But the South African politicians they seem to not care about what's happening in Zimbabwe because just like I said in my previous videos that politicians they don't care about what's going to happen in in Zimbabwe especially the the African National Congress politicians because these guys they don't have to live with people who come from outside their country they don't have to share hospital beds with people who come outside of their country so guys today I want you to listen to Julius Malema and I also want you to listen to Figlen Baluna when they talk about this issue of Zimbabwe I want you to make up your own mind when it comes to this whole thing of Zimbabwe I want you to to to, to actually tell me who represent who represents your views when it comes to this issue of Zimbabwe because what Julius Malema is saying one thing and, and Figlen Balula is saying a completely different thing I agree with you that uh, uh, um, elections are coming and South Africa must play a, an important role. There is a problem in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. There is a big problem um, in Zimbabwe where the rights of citizens are being violated openly and no one is saying anything about it, including South Africa. Elections get stolen daylight by the army. For sure, they have the results by now. Me and you are still talking about elections. They are done. <laughs> they have the results. They, those things are also formality. It can't be correct that ZANU PF holds the people of Zimbabwe hostage. If it means ZANU PF must lose elections for it to go and self correct, so be it. But let the people, the, the voice of the people of Zimbabwe be respected. It can't be a win-win-win at all costs. In the EFF, we we believe strongly that Chamisa won the last elections. And it was undermined by violence that was unleashed on citizens of Zimbabwe. I mean, like, that's what people are saying right now. Even right now, Zimbabwe, like, Chamisa won the elections. I mean, like, guys, honestly, for me personally, there is no way you can convince me that Zimbabweans prefer Zanopia for over Chamisa. You cannot convince me otherwise, guys. You cannot. Guys, you saw what happened in Zimbabwe right now in the elections. Police stations didn't have ballot papers. Some police stations didn't open. Some police stations, they closed early. People went as far as saying that their lives were threatened by Zanu PF army and their minions. You cannot convince me that the people of Zimbabwe are in favor of Zanu PF. You cannot convince me otherwise, man. Otherwise, Zimbabwe... Otherwise, Zimbabweans would, would have never been all over the country. Man, these people are scattered all over the country. They are, they are scattered all over the world. And it's not like Zimbabweans, they want to be scattered all over the world. But because they have the ZANU PF in charge, nothing is working in Zimbabwe, man. It's nothing is working. You know, the, 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 the Ramaphosa right now, he just congratulated Monangago for winning the elections. Man, can you believe that? Ramaphosa literally congratulated Monangago for winning the elections in Zimbabwe. It's insane, man. They are congratulating the guy who assumed power by a military coup for winning elections, man. That's what they are doing right now. And this is exactly why this issue is so dangerous to South Africa. Because the ANC, they are, they are literally fantasizing with the whole thing of ZANU-PF. The ANC is, is looking at how ZANU-PF is, is treating its citizens. The ANC is looking at how ZANU-PF moves. And it's almost as if they want to do the same thing because it makes no sense. Why would the ANC condone this? Why would the ANC be out there or openly supporting Munangawa, guys? Knowing exactly that Munangawa assumed power by a military coup. You heard President Ramaphosa saying that what happened in Niger, it cannot be condoned. The military coups, they cannot be condoned. Even Fikile Mbalula, Fikile Mbalula recently tweeted that the military coups cannot be, co cannot be condoned. You know that recently there was a military, there, there, there is an, an only happening military coup in Gabon right now. The Gabonese military, they, 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 like they kicked, out, they, they kicked out the French puppet. They kicked him out. And Fikram Balula, what did he say? Military coups cannot be condoned. But today the same guys are here praising the same guy who, who assumed the power by military coup. So how is it possible that what happens in Niger or in Gabon, it cannot be condoned, but what happens in our, no, in, in our neighbor, it, it, it's okay. 
No, guys, we really like nah, guys. Come on, man. This whole issue of 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 of, of Zimbabweans in South Africa, man. The, the only party that is actually holding everything from happening is the ANC because they are not doing anything, man. The president of South Africa is the president of SADC, man. When Ramaphosa goes out there and says that he congratulates Mnangagwa for winning the elections, but the SADC mission that went to, to, to Zimbabwe says that the elections was not fair. What's happening there? But is the sanctions solution? No. 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 The Zimbabweans are suffering as we speak. You know how you negotiate the best terms as business and as countries. Zimbabwe should be open to you to go and invest there, but negotiate the best deals and conditions of such investment. No sanctions must stop you from going to invest in Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans are struggling, and the world must go and help Zimbabweans. Um, exactly, guys. This is what Julius Malema said before the elections in Zimbabwe was conducted, man. He predicted, just like the rest of us, he predicted that the elections would be stolen in Zimbabwe. There is no way that a majority of Zimbabweans are in favor of ZANU-PF. Man, there is no fucking way. There is no way. And you listen to Fikile Mbalula when he talks about this thing. There is a lot of wealth in terms of that country. But the, the Zimbabwean situation is bigger than just that. Uh, people like to simplify the Zimbabwean issue. Uh, and it only comes up during the election. We said to you, in Zimbabwe, the whole country has moved its year in South Africa. Who said that? It's me, on behalf of the ANC. And what is the solution? Before the elections, we said, lift the sanctions, get the economy working. In you know, every time when Fikile Mbadula says that they, they must lift the sanctions on Zimbabwe, who is going to benefit if the if if the if the sanctions in Zimbabwe are uplifted? Who is going to benefit more? Who is going to benefit more if the sanctions are uplifted in Zimbabwe? Because the the problem in Zimbabwe is the political power, is the political party that is in power. The political party that is in power is the problem in Zimbabwe, not the fact that they are sanctioned. What's the point of lifting the sanctions on Zimbabwe, where the Zanu-PF is going to benefit? Now, no one is going to benefit in Zimbabwe. No one is going to benefit. If the sanctions are, are, are lifted, no, who is going to benefit in Zimbabwe right now if the sanctions are lifted? Guys, you saw what happened. You, we, we all watched Al Jazeera with that gold mafia document. We all saw that. We all saw how Zimbabwean, niche, how, how, how Zimbabwean government officials are literally selling their positions to advance their business deals. And right now we are talking about a country that is unsanctioned. The country that is sanctioned. So if as long as Zanu PF is, is, is still in Zimbabwe, nothing will work in Zimbabwe, man. As long as Zanu PF is still in charge in Zimbabwe, nothing will work in Zimbabwe. If you uplift the sanctions right now, Zanu PF is going to go even harder on Zimbabweans, so knowing exactly that people are now free to come and invest in Zimbabwe. Man, do you honest, do you honestly believe that right now Mnangawa cares about the people of Zimbabwe? Do you think Mnangagwa cares about the people of Zimbabwe, man? And it's so frustrating that the Zimbabweans are the ones who have to live with these sanctions. Are the ones who have to, to, to bear the pain of these sanctions while these politicians are stealing their mineral resources and living good life. So Zimbabwe is sanctioned. But if you, if you lift the sanctions, the people of Zimbabwe are still going to suffer. Because as long as we have ZANU-PF there, the party that hates Zimbabweans, the party that despises the Zimbabweans, the party that don't want to see Zimbabwe making any progress in Africa. As long as you have those people in charge, nothing will work in Zimbabwe, man. You can uplift all the sanctions that you want, but what you are going to do, you're going to embolden ZANU-PF even more. So it's so sad that, that right now Zimbabweans have to live with these sanctions. It's so sad that the Zimbabwean people, like the Zimbabwean people, they have to live with these sanctions. So Fikile Mbalula goes out there and says, no, we said that they must lift the sanctions. As if lifting the sanctions in Zimbabwe is going to benefit the people of Zimbabwe. Man, come on, man, guys. Come on, the people, like right now, he's, he's saying that. He's saying the whole Zimbabwean country has moved to South Africa. 
what he's saying. Zimbabwe is moving to South Africa. And guess what? It's because the ANC doesn't want to hold Zanu PF accountable. So guess what? The people in Zimbabwe are simply going to come to South Africa, man. You cannot expect the people in Zimbabwe to keep living in Zimbabwe under the, the apartheid regime of Zanu PF. You cannot expect that. You cannot expect people who are able to move out of Zimbabwe to still stay in apartheid, apartheid Zimbabwe. You cannot, you cannot expect that, man. The Zanu PF regime, man, it's an apartheid regime. It's an apartheid regime, man. These people, they hate Zimbabweans. They don't want to see Zimbabweans going in. They, like, they, they don't want to see Zimbabweans pro progress in any way, shape or form. And we have the Secretary General of the African National Congress, the one party that is supposed to be holding ZANU-PF accountable. But I think just because they are both liberation movements, they are both corrupt liberation movements that are doing absolutely nothing for their people. Now, they are brothers. It makes, it makes perfect sense why these people are, are, are brothers. So guys, a lot of Zimbabweans are coming to South Africa, man. A lot of undocumented people are coming into South Africa. People like Vicky Mbalula, they don't care about that. I'm going to tell you guys until it sinks inside your head. People like Vicky Mbalula, they don't care that Zimbabweans come to South Africa. Because it does not affect them personally. They don't have to fight for job opportunities with people who come from outside of South Africa. They don't have to share the hospital beds with people who come from outside South Africa. They don't have to live in communities with these people that they don't know who come from outside of South Africa. Man. That's why the people like Fikile Mbalula, like, it's, it's so nice for him. It's so nice. These guys, they are out there congratulating Zanu PF and Mnangagwa. But the mission they sent to, 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 to Zimbabwe to actually see if the elections was fair, it says the, the, the elections was not fair. So the SADC mission says the election in Zimbabwe was a sham. But right now, the African National Congress is out here congratulating Mnangagwa, congratulating the, 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 the ZANU PF. What kind of nonsense is this, guys? Zimbabwe. And then uh, increased rate. Uh, guys, all of these things that Fikin Balula is talking about, you have to understand that if these things are allowed to happen in Zimbabwe, Zimbabweans are going to suffer more. Zimbabweans will never move forward as long as they have Zanu PF. Like guys, even if the, the trade in Zimbabwe is improved, ordinary, ordinary Zimbabweans are not going to benefit nothing from Zanu PF. Ordinary Zimbabweans are not going to benefit anything from Zanu PF. Zimbabweans, even under apartheid, never crossed the river to come here. Exactly. Even under apartheid, they never cross the river to come to, the, to South Africa. Is Fikile Mbalula implying that Zimbabweans lived better under apartheid? Because that's what, that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like Fikile Mbalula is saying that the Zimbabweans were better off under apartheid regime. Or under the, 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 the white colonizers. Because the ZANU PF, ZANU PF guys, ZANU PF is it's an apartheid regime. ZANU PF is an oppressive apartheid regime. So Fikile Mbalula says that Zimbabweans were, were better off under apartheid. And as for jobs, they stayed in their country under Ian Smith regime. So they stayed in their country because Zimbabwe was regarded as the breadbasket of uh, the African continent. And what happened? Uh, there is a lot of wealth in terms of that country from the point of view of minerals and all of that. Uh, political uh, uh, challenges, and uh, including the outcome of the elections, must be resolved by Zimbabweans. And Zimbabweans must learn to be patriotic about their own country and not work to undermine the democratic processes of their own country. What democratic processes is Fikil Mbalula is talking about, guys? What democratic processes is Fikile Mbalula talking about? Guys, even the other, the other day, Fikile Mbalula said this thing. He said that Zimbabweans must exercise their democracy. How can you exercise a democracy with people who, who staged a military coup to be in power? They keep talking about this democracy and Zimbabwe. How can you mention Zimbabwe and democracy in one line? You cannot. You cannot. 
Just imagine right now, I'll go into Gabon or go into to, to begin a fast or Mali or Guinea and, 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 and talk about democracy. What democracy, man? What democracy? <sighs> By way of even conniving with forces that want that country to be subjected to uh, perpetual sanctions. Um, Zimbabwe has already been subjected to perpetual sanctions, man. And it's all thanks to ZANU-PF. It's all thanks to ZANU-PF. He says that Zimbabweans must be patriotic. Look, guys, how, how, how many years? Zimbabweans, how many years? How many, how many years can Zimbabweans stay in Zimbabwe and, and watch their families being brutally uh, uh, slaughtered by this regime? Are you blaming Zimbabweans for coming to South Africa? Man, you have to understand that the Zimbabweans, they have never tasted democracy, man. Zimbabweans have never tasted democracy. Can you imagine how South Africans would be mentally right now if we were still under apartheid? Because what's happening in Zimbabwe, it's apartheid, guys. You cannot tell me, like, what's happening in Zimbabwe, it's apartheid. No one can, can tell me otherwise. What's happening in Zimbabwe, it's apartheid. These people have never been free. Zimbabweans have never been free. They have never been free. Zimbabweans have never exercised their own. Their, their, like they have never, like they have never tasted the democracy, guys. Zimbabweans cannot do what I'm doing right now, being here online, being critical of the leadership in Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans have never tasted any democracy. They have never tasted any freedom. Nothing. These people have been slaughtered. They have been slaughtered by 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 by, by the past. Apartheid regime and the present apartheid regime. For decades, Zimbabweans have been slaughtered by, by, by white people and by these black people. Zimbabweans have been have been slaughtered by both black people and white people. So you cannot tell me that Zimbabwe there's there's any shape or form of democracy. There is no democracy in Zimbabwe, man. If there was democracy in Zimbabwe, men they, they wouldn't have closed the polling stations early. Some polling stations, it can be that in Har, it can be that in in capital city, men in Harare, they didn't have some places in Harare, the strongholds of of, of CCC, they, they didn't have ballot papers. In the, in in Harare, guys, Harare in Zimbabwe, the capital city of Zimbabwe, there were places where they didn't have ballot papers in Zimbabwe. Can you believe that the ballot papers are printed in Zimbabwe? But some places that are 300 kilometers away from Harare, they had ballot papers. But all those places that, that, that are triple C strongholds, they didn't have ballot papers. How? <laughs> guys, these guys, they don't care. They don't care about us. The politicians, they don't care about us, guys. You have to understand that. You have to understand that. Whether you like it or not, you have to understand that. It's a must. You have to. It's a, like this guy is out there congratulating Mnangagwa and everything. But today he says that Zimbabweans must be patriotic and, and fight for their country. Fight for what? You said that everything was in order in Zimbabwe. The United States, even Britain, they didn't come to the party in terms of uh, the agreements at Lancaster. Um, they agreed that they will give Zimbabweans uh, about uh, 43 billion pounds for land redistribution program. Tony Blair is no longer even president now. He never came to the party up until there was change of gear after 10 years of democracy in Zimbabwe. where the There has never been democracy in Zimbabwe. Man. Land redistribution program became the major issue and uh, scorn on the ZANU-PF uh, government led by President Mugabe. And uh, 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 we have been very consistent to say that first Britain come to the party, today we are still consistent, lift the sanctions. If there are problems of election results and the one party is aggrieved about the outcome, let them follow their own processes. Yeah, it's nice to it's nice it's nice it's nice for Fikin Balila to say the processes, the democratic processes and all that man. It makes no absolutely no sense to me, man. As long as Zimbabwe men are under Zanu PF, man, every, nothing will work in Zimbabwe, man. That's what I can say. That's what I can say. Nothing will work in Zimbabwe, man. We have the ANC in South Africa that is condoning everything that is happening in Zimbabwe. 
The African National Congress is condoning everything that is happening in Zimbabwe, man. And it's very dangerous to think that in 2024, we will be having our own elections here in South Africa. We will be having our own elections here in South Africa. And guess what? People are not, people are, people, people are skeptical when it comes to this 2024 elections. People are very skeptical when it comes to 2024 elections. I am very skeptical when it comes to 2024 elections because I'm looking at how the, the ANC is, 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 is flattering with the whole idea of ZANU-PF. I'm looking at them. Fikile Mbalula was there posting the, the, the videos, posting Mnangago and everything. Now he's trying to backtrack by saying that Zimbabweans must, ma, 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 must be patriotic and fight for their country. Fight for what? When you said everything was order, it was in order in, South, in, in Zimbabwe, man. And in South Africans, you have to understand that before it, it, it sinks in your mind that the, what's happening in Zimbabwe, it's, it, it's our fight as much as it's Zimbabweans fight. You, you, guys, you can stay there pretending like South Africa is better with everything. Like you can do whatever that you want to do. But you cannot blame Zimbabweans for coming to South Africa to seek for a better life. Man, these people are sick and tired of being brutally slaughtered by this oppressive apartheid regime of ZANU-PF. They are, they are sick and tired. I don't blame Zimbabweans for coming to South Africa, man. Like I said before, if I was if I if I was born in Zimbabwe, man, I would be living in South Africa. There is no way I would allow a situation where I live under the oppressive apartheid regime of ZANU-PF. There is no way. There is no way. So you cannot blame Zimbabweans for, 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 for coming to South Africa to seek for a better life. You cannot. These are the people who who, 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 who who are supposed to be there, making sure that everything that everything is, is good in Zimbabwe. Because guys, we have to understand if Zimbabwe if Zimbabwe comes right, everything's going to be right in Sadek, man. And, you, and and Zimbabweans are not in South Africa because they like. Everyone wants to live in their own country. Zimbabweans are not here because they want to be in South Africa, man. South Africans need to stop with this nonsense of acting like Zimbabweans are so desperate to live in South Africa. They are not here because they want to live in South Africa. They are here because they are seeking for a better life. So all that nonsense of hating immigrants, it has to stop. It has to stop. It has to. So guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. Please hit that like button in the most important part, guys. Please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.